Good morning. Welcome to Coffee and Prayer. I've got one of my favorite coffee cups here. God's, God is the potter and you and I are the clay. Today is the fourth Sunday of Lent. Let's open our worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now, join me in the prayer of the day. The Lord be with you. O oh God, rich in mercy, by the humiliation of your Son, you lifted up this fallen world and rescued us from the hopelessness of death. Lead us into your light, that all our deeds may reflect your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, world without end. Amen. The Old Testament reading today is from the book of Numbers, chapter 21, verses 4 through 9. From Mount Horeb, they set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom, but the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought, you up, brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Our epistle is Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 through 10. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. Word of God, word of life. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness, and shine.
The gospel for today is one that you're quite familiar with. John chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. So in the Old Testament reading where the bronze serpent cures people from snake bite, the lifting up of Jesus on the cross brings salvation to those who look upon him. Then we get John 3.16, right? For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. The text goes on. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and people loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light, and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. Word of God, word of life. I decided to change coffee cups. I think Pete's French roast is my favorite, but they're not paying me to advertise. The Gospel in Miniature, John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have everlasting life. I define the story. Uh, the uh, Gospel is the story of Jesus told with its significance. And here we get the whole story with its significance in one sentence. <laughs> That's the shortest version of the Gospel, I think we can have. One of the things I like to do with John 3.16 is look at the word for world. In the original Greek, it's cosmos, for God so loved the cosmos. When you and I look up at the night sky when it's cloudless, on the one hand, it's dark, but on the other hand, it's lit up with these tiny little uh, bright light bulbs, Christmas tree light bulbs up there in uh, beyond the stratosphere. Darkness and light. The world, the cosmos, lives in darkness, and the Son of God comes into the darkness to bring light. If you read the whole Gospel of John from beginning to end, that's the theme. The world is in darkness, God brings light through the sun, but the powers of darkness rise up and snuff out the light. Jesus Christ is crucified on the cross. Why? Because people love darkness more than they do light. If your and my deeds are evil, the light exposes them and everyone can see. And if you pay any attention to politics, Oh my gosh, every day it's the battle between darkness and light as one politician after another gets exposed for 
some level of corruption or harassment or something. And the news thinks of itself as shining the light and making transparent the darkness that our leaders want to hide in. The universal human principle and as sinners, it's your and my inclination to snuff out the light before it can reveal who we are and what we do. That's why Jesus got crucified. The darkness has power. But some of us like the light. We're attracted to the light. We follow the light. We want to live our daily life in God's light. And that means if you and I are followers of the light, that we are following what is eternal. We are following God's gift of truth. And says the gospel in miniature, we shall not perish, but have eternal life. Please join me now in the prayers of intercession. God, you sent your son that the world might be saved through him. Inspire the witness of the church throughout the world. Empower missionaries, Bible translators, and ministries of service in your name. Bless our partners in ministry, NOAA, Lutheran Social Services, uh, the Gideons who distribute Bibles, our ELCA Global Partner Churches, and young adults in global mission. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. And you can say your mercy is great out loud. From east to west, your steadfast love is shown. Nourish seas and deserts, wilderness areas and cities. Give water to thirsty lands. Nurture spring growth that feeds hungry creatures. Bless farmers as they prepare for the growing season. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You sustained your people in the wilderness. Give courage to all who lead in times of crisis and scarce resources. Prosper the work of those who aid victims of famine and drought and SARS-CoV-2. Bring peace in places where scarce resources cause violence. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Your mercy endures forever. Deliver all who cry to you, especially those who are hungry or without homes. Give life in places where death seems triumphant. Give healing to those who are sick and comfort those who mourn. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all who are in need, those for those who are suffering for the faith, for those who are poor, hungry, and homeless, for those who are sick and those awaiting death, and for those in the Cross and Crown family and friends, Bob, Mary Ann, Sean, Russell, Brighton and Bianca, 
Chris Day and Steve, Lynn, RJ, Treese, Linda, Scott, Linda, Dutch, Charles, and Richard. We also lift up Joanne, Carol, Gabe, Chris, Mark, Ed, and Sawyer. Those homebound, Ruth and Pastor Leon and Norma. Oh God, you are the healer of every ill. Hear us, oh God, your mercy is great. Receive our thanks for all who died in the faith and bring us at the final resurrection into your everlasting life where sorrows will be no more. Into your gracious and mighty hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please join me out loud with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. And of course, empty that coffee cup. Bye. Let us bless our God. Praise and thanks to.